Hello and welcome back to Curiosity Mine and welcome to one of the coolest and craziest stories that I've had the privilege to tell on this channel. A few months ago I met up with Dr. Patrice Ray, geologist at the University of Sydney, to talk about his research studying the similarities between the geology of Outback Australia and the geology of the surface of Mars. You can watch the video all about that right here and please do. But the gist of Dr. Ray's discoveries is that the middle of Outback Australia is an excellent analogue for the surface of Mars. And to cut a long story short, there's probably opal on Mars too, just like there's opal in Outback Australia. But this is not Dr. Patrice Ray's only connection to the Red Planet. And that discovery about Outback Australia and what we're going to talk about today aren't even connected to each other. Mars has somehow found Dr. Ray twice. And this is the story of the other time. So that rock sample was collected in 2015. So this story is about a rock that originated here in the Pilbara region of Western Australia. So this is, you know, um, this is a, a rock which is um, coming also from the, from the Pilbara. It's called a banded iron formation. It is made uh, of two types of layers, the, the dark red one, which is made of iron oxide, mainly hematite. And then the white ones, which is mainly made of very tiny grains of, of quartz. So this is the crop where that rock was selected. I was with my uh, colleagues, Nicola Coltis here from, uh, uh, at the time he was at the uh, University of Lyon. And Claire uh, Mala was a PhD student uh, at the time. Dr. Ray received a request from NASA for a few rock samples, but there wasn't a lot of information about what was needed or what it would be needed for. The objective of the mission was not even, you know, uh, uh, set in stone at the time. So our brief was really simple was, oh, can you send us, you know, a few samples of shirt, you know, a red shirt, a black shirt and a, and a white shirt. So Dr. Ray packed up the rock samples and sent them to NASA. And for a long time, not much happened. Yeah, so for five years we never heard about that sample, but that sample, you know, traveled through France and then Spain and then uh, um, Queensland was also involved in the processing of that sample. Uh, and then it was sent to, um, to, the, to the Mars, uh, to the NASA Mars team in the US. When you think about space missions to other planets, the Apollo missions to the moon, the Mars missions, and you think about the science experiments happening on all of those missions, you probably think about bringing rocks back to Earth, bringing Mars rocks back so that we can study them. You don't really think about the opposite, sending an Earth rock to Mars. But that's what Dr. Ray and his team did, and the rock was needed for a very specific purpose. And uh, that sample was embedded here in that calibration target, yeah, for the purpose of calibrating some of the equipment on board uh, Perseverance. Perseverance has seven specific microlabs, all designed to do specific things. Just quickly, they are Mastcam Z, which is a panoramic stereoscopic imaging camera, Meda, which measures the weather on Mars, Moxie, which is exploring the possibility of creating oxygen on Mars, Pixel is an X ray spectrometer for imaging Martian surface minerals, Rimfax is a form of ground penetrating radar for imaging the subsurface of Mars, Sherlock is an ultraviolet spectrometer designed to detect organic compounds, and finally, Supercam, which is a wideband spectral analyzer that can detect and identify chemicals in Martian rocks and dust. And Supercam, the spectral analyzer, is our friend today. Okay, so all those uh, equipment, they are there to, to measure a particular signal. And through time, uh, that signal can, can decay or can shift. So on a regular basis, you need to calibrate your instrument by using targets that have a known composition. The SuperCam Calibration Target, or SCCT, because NASA loves a good acronym, is a grid of samples that kind of looks a bit like a Connect 4 board. It's located towards the back of the Perseverance rover in a corner where SuperCam can kind of look over its own shoulder every so often to peek at the chart. And for this purpose, there was this calibration target here, which is made of about uh, two dozen samples. Most of them are synthetic samples of non-composition. But there is a couple of uh, rocks uh, sample here, and that particular one here is the piece that was extracted from a rock from the Pilbara uh, in Western Australia. And they wanted to have a chert, which is a very fine-grained uh, rock with a very low porosity, so there is no possibility of gas 
contamination and the purpose of that particular sample here is, yeah, is to make sure that the, 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 the spectrometer that are on board uh, Perseverance are properly calibrated. The calibration chart is a bit like, if you'll excuse the ridiculous oversimplification, it's a bit like setting the white balance on your camera. If the lights change or the environment changes or the weather changes, then sometimes you need to reset your equipment to make sure it's reading what it already knows properly before you trust it to collect good data about things it doesn't know. So about six months bef before lunch time, I received a phone call <laughs> asking for as many details as possible for, from that sample, in particu particular its location. And it was sample, you know, at about five kilometers uh, southwest of Marble Bar. And I've been told that, yeah, it was important for them to have a very low porosity because of the vacuum that those samples have to experience. Uh, you cannot have sample with too much uh, air uh, inside. So they were happy to have a, a chart sample, which is very tight. So all of that data was logged as part of the baseline information for how Supercam should read the sample of Chert from the Pilbara so that we know that we can trust the information that it detects from Martian rock samples in the same environment. This can't get any cooler, can it? Can it? Yeah, so the, the extra um, thing which is interesting, and NASA didn't know actually when we sent the sample to NASA, they didn't know the detail, uh, but that particular sample was uh, taken from an ad crop that belonged to the oldest delta on Earth. So somehow it has all the ingredients uh, that um, uh, the ingredients we expect to find uh, on the G0 crater. And it's true, the oldest life on Earth is found in the Pilbara in the form of stromatolites, which are columns of cyanobacteria that are approximately 3.5 billion years old, which is only 1 billion years younger than the age of the Earth. So yeah, there's something pretty incredible about sending a rock from the oldest site of life on our planet to our red planet neighbor, where we're all hoping to find evidence of life too. These particular minerals from the Pilbara region also tell us quite a bit about prehistoric Earth. And it's a rock that you would find in all Archean cratons at the surface of the Earth. An Archean craton is, is something which is in between 2.5 and, and 4 billion years old. Uh, and it's interesting to see that this is one of the sedimentary rocks, sedimentary rocks that exist in all cratons. And it probably tells us something about the transport of iron at the surface of continents and onto the margins of continents. And it tells us something about the history of oxidation. So the idea is that what we see here is ferric iron, so uh, iron oxide uh, in the form of uh, Fe3+, so oxidized uh, version of, uh, of iron. And this uh, uh, oxidation uh, come from the interaction between the oxygen of the atmosphere and reduced iron. Um, so it, people believe that it's at the time of the oxygenation of the Earth atmosphere that we started to rust basically the continental crust and, and form this kind of uh, uh, rocks there. So these rocks are telling, telling us something about the oxygenation of the, the Earth atmosphere. So these rock samples not only represent the location of some of the oldest fossil life on Earth, they also represent a very important phase of the ancient Earth's development, because without oxygenation, you and I would have a hard time living here. I also asked Dr. Ray about cross-contamination of both the Earth and Mars through the exchange of rocks, which may contain organic or chemical matter that could influence the environment on either end. Sending a rock from the Earth to Mars seems to have some risks attached. But yes, NASA definitely, you know, have this in, in mind. Uh, so not only the, the concern of con contamination from Mars, from Earth to Mars, but also when we're going to bring back the samples from Mars to Earth, there was also, you know, concern that we can bring things that, you know, um, we may not want uh, uh, on Earth. Um, and and uh, in particular, the, the tubes that host those uh, cylinder of rocks are made in the way that are very tight. So 
let's hope that we can trust NASA with its technology to make sure that uh, the samples, you know, are bring back to Earth in a, in a, in a safer manner. We should not be too, too concerned because uh, we have on Earth rocks coming from Mars and they are coming from meteorites. In fact, there was a, an hypothesis out there that even life on, on, on Earth came from those meteorites that have traveled from Mars to, to Earth. Uh, the idea that, you know, we think that maybe life has emerged on Earth, but perhaps it has emerged into another planet. And then through the traveling of meteorites from those planets, life took hold uh, uh, on Earth. So yeah, it, it, wor it works both ways. We need to be careful, you know, in terms of contamination, to bring contamination to, to, to Mars, and also the other way around. Curiosity Mine is on Patreon. Patreon is a service that allows you to directly support your favourite creators to allow them to continue making the content that you enjoy. If you think Curiosity Mine deserves it, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon, either at patreon.com slash curiositymine or curiositymine.com slash patreon. If you choose to support the channel, you'll get your name on this list of amazing people who are already supporting the channel. Thank you to each and every one of you. But for now, let's get back to Earth Rocks on their way to Mars. Also, this is the official LEGO Technic set of the Perseverance rover, which is pretty cool. And if you look down in here, there is a sticker representing a calibration target. Unfortunately, it's the calibration target for Mastcam Z, which is the stereoscopic imaging camera. I mean, it's pretty cool that they include any calibration targets at all, but it would have been really awesome if there'd been a tiny little Connect 4 board of rock samples on a sticker, just on this little slope, just back here. So I asked Dr. Ray if NASA was going to reciprocate and give him a Mars rock in return for his Australian Earth rock, but it doesn't seem very likely. That would be nice, actually. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say no uh, uh, to that. But, you know, I, at that stage, I'm super happy. I'm super happy, actually, to have sent that little piece of, uh, of Australia uh, to another planet. I'm not too sure how many people can claim that, you know, besides my colleagues, you know, Claire and, and, uh, and Nicola. But yeah, I'm not too sure if there is many other um, yeah, situation where, you know, somebody, an inhabitant from this planet has sent anything, you know, uh, yeah, uh, a rock, you know, to another, to another planet. So I'm, I'm happy just to, to say that, yeah, I've contributed something to Mars. And uh, I cannot wait to tell the story to my grandkids. <laughs> So that's how a piece of the Australian Outback, a sample of Chert from the Pilbara region in Western Australia, one of the oldest known locations of organic life on Earth, was selected to be sent to Mars as part of the calibration system for the Perseverance rover's highly advanced spectroscopy system. Not only is the Australian Outback similar to the geology of the surface of Mars, but it's now integral to our future understanding of it because there's a piece of the Pilbara keeping Supercam running and properly identifying the chemical makeup of Mars rocks, which is pretty amazing. This video was made with the help of Dr. Patrice Ray at Sydney University. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to Curiosity Mine on YouTube. And if you think the channel deserves it, maybe even supporting it directly via Patreon. The link is in the description. And thank you for watching. <laughs>